Weather and life both change quickly. Do you have a farm estate plan? You need to learn the best option to help your family avoid or minimize federal estate taxes and other costs. I'm Brad Swenson, President of Swenson Investments and Commodities. We work confidentially with farmers, ranchers, and advisors to help develop the best farm estate plan. During our Farm Basics time today, we wanted to talk about an important concept in agriculture, and that is the pre-harvest interval. Well, there are a lot of different crop protection products that farmers may choose to use throughout the season, whether it's fungicides to protect from disease, insecticides to protect from bugs, herbicides to kill those weeds that are destroying your yields. There's so many things that a farmer may need to use, but you have to be aware of how far it is until harvest with many of the products. Well, the reason why is before any herbicide or any pesticide in the United States gets labeled, it has to go through the EPA. And one of the tests that goes on is residual tests. So in other words, if you spray it on a crop, how much residual is left and how long does that residual in the plant last late in the season? So that's what brings us to pre-harvest interval. It's basically how much time prior to harvest do you have to apply a particular product. Is it 30 days? Is it 60 days? Is it 90 days? That information will be on the product's label. Well, if you're a non-farmer, you're probably saying, wow, I hope farmers are on top of all these things because, boy, that would be terrible to have some residue in the crops, you know, that eventually end up as food products for us. But really, let's not get carried away here. For farmers, they're controlling bugs and diseases and weeds early in the season in most cases. What it comes down to is when they may have to make a late rescue type application. Like let's say for example in this soybean field that we're in, there's some grasshoppers that come in just before harvest and they're starting to clip off some pods or something like that. This is a case where a farmer would say, you know what, this is unusual. I never have to apply something this late. I better check out which products are even available at this time for me to use when I'm this close to harvest. Now the one crop that I would say, you know, every year, pre-harvest intervals become a big deal is alfalfa because guys for the most part are cutting that alfalfa every 28 days and wow that doesn't leave a lot of time because some of the pre-harvest intervals on certain products may be 30 days or even longer. Well those are products that alfalfa farmers they don't even consider. They're looking at products that may have a one day pre-harvest interval or maybe a seven day pre-harvest interval. Those are important things when you have a crop that you're going to be continuously harvesting. In something like soybeans or corn where we only harvest them once per season, farmers have got most of those things taken care of so early in the season pre-harvest intervals never come into play. Okay so Darren brought up an interesting point there. In alfalfa there are some products that might have a one day pre-harvest interval and that's in alfalfa. In soybeans, you could use the same product and it might have a 28 day pre-harvest interval. And you say, well, why is there so much difference? One day in one crop and 28 days in another crop. A lot of times what it has to do with is, chances are that actually is a pretty safe product. And if you used it one day pre-harvest in soybeans, it might not hurt anything. But the point is when EPA is requiring all these tests to be done from the different companies, they require a lot more testing and a lot more dollars to get invested basically if you're going to try to prove a one day pre-harvest interval as compared to a 28 day pre-harvest interval. So a lot of the companies look at it and say, okay, well there's no farmer in the world that wants to spray his soybeans within 28 days of harvest. So why even test that? Why go through all that? We'll just show the government, hey, you know, it's gone in so much time, we get the 28 day pre-harvest interval, bam, we've got our label, no problem. We don't have to try to prove a one day pre-harvest interval because there's no market demand for it. Well, our point today is not to explain all the differences between products and, and what their pre-harvest intervals are. We just want you to understand there are pre-harvest intervals for farmers when they're applying products in the field to make sure there aren't residues from any pesticides in the food that you eat. Well, one of the reasons why farmers use pesticides is to control our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 